This is the weekly business news in English on TV3. I am Nugzar Rukhadze. How do you do? Georgian Prime Minister Irakli Garibashvili's successful visit in the United States of America. Successful indeed. After his meetings with European political leaders in Munich and Brussels, Georgian Prime Minister met with American high rank officials of the White House. Within the framework of his official visit, Irakli Garibashvili met with President Barack Obama, Vice President Joseph Biden, American senators, congressmen, and other top-level officials. President and Vice President of the United States congratulated the Georgian Prime Minister with the success in peaceful and democratic transfer of power in the country. At the same time, they called for cooperation with all political leaders and civil society of Georgia in order to achieve consolidation of the rule of law and significant democratic developments in the country. Leaders of the American administration express gratitude to Georgia for its loyal friendship and reliable partnership, which is manifested by support of regional and global priorities that are essential for the United States. President Obama voiced his appreciation of Georgia's contribution to the mission of NATO and expressed his sympathy for Georgian servicemen who died in Afghanistan. American President and Georgian Prime Minister discussed the likelihood of strengthening strategic cooperation and enhancing trade and investment links between the United States and Georgia. The President and Vice President of the United States confirmed their solid support for independence and territorial integrity of Georgia. They assured the Prime Minister of Georgia that USA supports the Euro-Atlantic aspiration of Georgian people and pledged that the United States will continue to assist the new government in implementation of political, economic, and defense spheres. Reads the statement promulgated by the White House. Prime Minister of Georgia assessed his visit in the United States of America as successful. I want to reiterate that our country, our government, and I were promised full support on the part of the White House. I confirm that this visit was very successful, the Georgian Prime Minister said. Russian militaries are diligently erecting barbed wire fences on the territory adjoining Atotsi village of the Kareli region. They resumed building uh, fences along the occupation line as soon as the Olympic Winter Games in Sochi was over. Residents of the village say that they are fenced out of their agricultural land plots. In their words, 11 families have lost over 10 hectares of land recently. The Ossetian side started to cultivate five hectares of appropriated land. Ikona village, subordinated to the Ossetian side, is adjacent to Atotsi village. Drinking water supply structure happens to be in the scope of Ikona village. Locals are afraid that if the process of land theft, land theft continues, they will be cut off drinking and irrigation water. Georgia marked the most tragic day in its history. On February the 21st of 1921, the troops of the Red Army moved from Baku, crossed the border, and attacked free and independent Georgia. By the order of the Bolshevik government, the 11th, 9th, 3rd, and 13th armies and the Budioni and Zhlob cavalries were uh, redeployed on the Georgian territory. On February the 25th, the Russian army occupied Belisi and proclaimed Soviet rule in Georgia. The jubilant Georgian Bolshevik Sergo Orjonikidze sent a telegram to Moscow to Lenin and Stalin 
informing them that Georgia had been invaded and Sovietized. The short, euphoric telegram, which implied the greatest strategy of the Georgian people, read, the red flag is flying over Tbilisi. Long live Soviet Georgia. 93 years ago, at the surroundings of Tbilisi, 30 Georgian cadets were killed in the battle against the Russian army. Among the young patriots who fell in the battle was the 18-year-old medical nurse Maro Makashvili, daughter of Kote Makashvili, chairman of Georgian Writers' Union. As of 2010, Georgia marks February the 25th as the day of occupation of Georgia and remembers its heroes who died in the battle for the independence of their homeland. On behalf of National Movement Faction, Levan Bejashvili, member of a parliamentary minority, launched an initiative. His intention is to grant the status of fighters for the freedom of Georgia to the Georgian citizens who died during the confrontation with special task units in Kiev. This will enable their families to receive appropriate compensations. Berashvili called on the Georgian government to give consideration to this issue. New ambassadors of Georgia have been appointed to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Republic of Moldova. Georgi Margvelashvili, President of Georgia, appointed Merab Antadze, an ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary to the Republic of Moldova and assigned Georgi Janjrava to the post of the ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Georgia's diplomatic relations are widening and acquiring more enhanced meaning day in, day out for the country's future development in every possible direction. Davitu Supashvili, Speaker of Georgian Parliament, met with Angelo Farruja, Chairman of the House of Representatives of Malta. In the opinion of Usupashvili, relations with Malta are very important for Georgia. He said that uh, at the meeting with the Speaker of the uh, Maltese House of Representatives, they discussed a number of issues. Mr. Farruja voiced firm guarantees that Malta will support Georgia's associated membership with the European Union as well as its full membership in the future. The parties touched upon the issues of strengthening parliamentary ties and enhancing economic relations. They also talked about cultural and historic experience of the two countries. Mr. Angelo Farruja uh, stated that Malta is one of the first countries of Euro Union which established bilateral diplomatic relations with Georgia. Our countries have many traits in common. Georgia, as well as Malta, has geographic location that is very important for European Union, Mr. Farruja emphasized. About 600,000 Georgian citizens will get back 360 lari as an untaxed minimum. In 2013, the concept of untaxed minimum was entered in the taxation code of the Ministry of Finance of Georgia. It envisages the return of 360 lari to the low-income citizens whose yearly income is, in 2013 did not exceed 6,000 lari. In this connection, the Revenue Service of the Ministry of Finance signed a memorandum of cooperation with commercial banks. 
During 2013, we have been working on the issue of untaxed minimum, and starting from April the 1st, the citizens will start getting this sum back. There, too, the citizens whose income did not exceed 6,000 lari annually should apply to the banks that have signed the said memorandum. If the citizens used to receive salaries by the cash in hand method and their income is not declared, they won't get the sum back, Irakli Gvaramadze, head of the Revenue Service, explains. In order to get back 20% of income tax, the low income tax payer must fill in an electronic declaration on the website of the Revenue Service. He or she must indicate his or her personal number and bank requisites. Upon filling in the electronic declaration, the taxpayer will get the information on the amount of money that he or she is to receive. After that, the specified sum will be transferred to the bank account that the potential recipient of compensation has indicated in the electronic declaration. Sessions are held countrywide within the framework of the program of support for villages. Residents of the countryside are offered the opportunity to identify the problems which they need to have solved. The authorized persons of villages uh, underwent two-week course of training in the effective management of the program. 50 million lari was allotted from the state budget to implement local projects. Within the scope of the sum earmarked by the program, vital requirements of villages will be fulfilled. The sessions will continue up to March the 6th of the current year. On the initiative of the Ministry of Agriculture, the Agency of Management of Agricultural Projects launched the project of assistance to the land poor farmers in the spring works of 2014. By now, farmers can receive the so-called agro cards. Farmers of Kacheti, Kvemokartli, Shidakartli and Tsheta, Tianeti will get agro cards along with agricultural cards. Distribution of agro cards in the eastern Georgia began on February the 17th. Farmers can receive plastic cards at the offices of Liberty Bank during the period of six months. In the year of 2014, budget of spring works for land poor farmers is 90 million lari. David Galigashvili, Deputy Minister of Agriculture, explains that the plastic cards are multifunctional and they will be valid for the projects and programs that are planned for the upcoming years as well. The free and agricultural universities intend to implement the project of technological university independently. Agreement on cooperation has been reached with the University of Missouri and talks are underway with the University of Nevada. After the third year of studies at the Agricultural and Free University, students of scientific technological orientation will continue their study in the United States of America. After they undergo the two-year term of education, the students will get the bachelor's degree along with the master's degree of the University of Missouri. The project of American Technological University was conceived to be realized in coordination with the state, but in 2013, the Georgian government canceled the project. After noticeably stepping up bank rolling of rugby, the government intends to promote the Georgian football. According, accordingly, it plans to allot 30 million lari to that end. Mainly, the financial means will be directed at building up of children's football and deciding the issues that abound in that sports sector. 
The process of uh, expenditure of allotted sums will be supervised by the special commission made up of the leaders of different ministries. Ministry of Sport and Youth is working out the five-year program of boosting the Georgian football. The minister says that above all, the program is aimed at large-scale in in involvement of public in soccer, enhancement of football clubs, and organizing international tournaments in Georgia. Key position in the said commission will be assigned to the Ministry of Regional Development and Infrastructure. The Prime Minister has assigned the ministry and its head uh, to construct soccer fields and football bases in the regions. Experts say that the program in question is mandatory for solving the problems that thrive in Georgian football, but at the same time, it is necessary to bump up private investments in our football because it is almost impossible to develop soccer only through the state uh, subsidy. The first priority topics on the agenda of the Commission are the Super Cup match uh, guide marked for 2015 and final UEFA games with participation of European youth teams under the age of 19 scheduled for 2017. Situation in Ukraine remains tense. This time, supporters of integration with Europe and the adherence to the idea of unified Ukraine confront the pro-Russian forces. The country faces the danger of splitting into two. Russia is ready to defend the Russian language population of Crimea, declared Leonid Slutsky, member of Russian Duma and chairman of the Committee for the Issues of CIS, Commonwealth of Independent States, during his visit in the Crimea. According to him, Russian deputies approved the idea of distributing the passports of the Russian Federation among the population of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea. Russian officials describe the events in Ukraine as political Chernobyl and point out that they will not surrender Sevastopol and the Crimea to the criminals. We have prepared a bill that envisages granting of Russian citizenship to these people. Russia has big plans of strengthening cultural and humanitarian relations with Ukrainians. We talked with the population of Crimea. They know that Russia won't turn its back to the people who it views as its kin. Uh, the pro-Russian mob raised Russian flag over the building of the Supreme Council of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and demanded from the Supreme Council to vote for the independence of the Crimea and declare disobedience to the central administration of Ukraine. The demand from the Supreme Council of Crimea to reinstate the Constitution of the Crimean Autonomous Republic of 1992 and hold the referendum that will request the autonomy of the Crimea. 60% of the Crimean autonomy is Russian. The Russian military machinery has appeared in Simferopol and Sevastopol. The confrontation has already engendered first victims. Politicians and experts fear that Russia may stage its favorite scenario of separation as it did with the help of its Abkhazian and Tsinvali region pawns. And now back to Georgia. Recently, the ancient Georgian method of wine fermentation in Kvevri, huge clay vessels embedded in soil, has been included in the treasury of global heritage. The UNESCO has acknowledged uh, uh, the uh, Georgian method of fermenting wine in Kvevri as a non-material cultural heritage. 
in this connection, uh, in Quarelli, in uh, Quarelli of the Cajete region, National Wine Agency of the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, Jareba Winery organized a festive reception at the Gvirabi tourist complex. The event was attended by the president of Georgia, Georgi Margulashvili, public figures engaged in the sphere of Georgian culture, ambassadors of different countries, and representatives of local government and diplomatic corps. Especially for this event, a distinguished uh, analogist of uh, world fame, Hervé Roma, hopefully I pronounce uh, this name correctly, arrived in Georgia from France. Fermenting wine in Quevery is original. The wine made in Quevery has specific taste. It is wonderful that Georgia succeeded in preserving this tradition for centuries. Uh, guests of Gvirabi tourist complex uh, had the opportunity to taste wines produced by Georgian companies according to the 8,000-year-old tradition. During the entire year, we will be very active and consistent in order to achieve our goal in building up recognizability of Georgian wine. We will have special attitude towards the Quevery wine. The Quevery wine, as a separate category, will be acknowledged and recorded in Georgian legislation. National Wine Agency of Georgia intends to initiate this idea. Long before the UNESCO Convention was created, the Georgian polyphony was recognized as a masterpiece of global heritage. The UNESCO granted the special status to it in 2001. This is very symbolic because Georgian wine without Georgian song is unimaginable and vice versa. The guests of the event in Khvareli had the chance to share two samples of Georgian cultural heritage, Georgian polyphony and Georgian wine, made by the Quevery method. That was uh, our evening edition. Uh, thank you very much for watching the weekly business news in English on TV3. I am Nugzaru Khadze. I'll see you again next Sunday, first at 10.30 a.m. and then at 10.30 p.m. Many cheers now and have a beautiful weekend.